untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another standard game to video. Today we're taking a look at an Abzan colored party deck featuring a couple new cards from Streets of New Capenna which have revitalized the archetype. And as always, the goal for a party deck is to complete a full party, meaning you want to control a cleric, a rogue, a warrior and a wizard at the same time to generate a big advantage. And one of the best payoff cards remains Squad Commander, a 3-3 warrior. When it enters, it generates a 1-1 warrior token for each creature in our party, including itself, so up to 4 tokens. And then at the beginning of combat on our turn, if we have a full party, creatures we control get plus 1 plus 0 and gain indestructible until end of turn. So a great way to break any board stop and then we also have access to the full set of Coveted Prize, a 5 mana sorcery, costs 1 less to cast for each creature in our party, so we can potentially cast it for just a single black, and then search our library for any card, put it into our hand, and then if we have a full party we may cast a spell with mana value 4 or less from our hand without paying its mana cost. So with a full party we can cast a 1 mana Coveted Prize and put a squad commander in play, which is incredibly powerful. And then the new additions from Streets of New Capenna include Mage's Attendant, a 3-mana three 3-2 three Cat Rogue. When it enters the battlefield, it generates a 1-1 one, one blue Wizard Creature token that we can sacrifice for 1 mana to counter target non-creature spell unless its controller pays 1 mana. So the Attendant adds 2 party types in 1 card, which is incredibly powerful, also helps us go wide to take advantage of the Squad Commander bonus. And then we also cannot underestimate that wizard token, which is useful for maybe countering a big sweeper effect from the opponent. And then we also have three copies of Extraction Specialist, a 3-2 human rogue with lifelink. When it enters, we can return a creature card with mana value 2 or less from our graveyard to the battlefield, and that creature cannot attack or block for as long as we control Extraction Specialist. So once again, a rogue that can maybe get back a wizard, a cleric, or some other creature type from our graveyard, representing two in one card. And then some of the creatures we can return with the specialist includes cards like Luminarch Aspirant, which we don't really care if it cannot attack or block as it will still place a plus one counter on one of our creatures every turn. And then we also have three copies of Raphine's Informant, a 2-1 Human Wizard, and Wizard is another very important type that you don't see a lot in these color combinations. And when it enters a battlefield, we can connive, meaning we can draw a card and then discard a card, and if we discard it, a non-land card, we can put a plus one plus one counter on it. So the Informant can potentially discard one of our cheaper creatures to set up our turn three specialist to get back the very same card that we just discarded. So we also get an extra plus one counter in the process and add more creatures types to the board maybe a little bit faster than we would be able to otherwise. So now our deck is pretty consistent at getting a turn 4 full party and we can even get there turn 3 thanks to Mage's Attendant and thanks to our Sentinel at 1 mana, another rogue that can potentially generate extra mana. The Priest of Iona is another payoff for controlling a full party as we can potentially give one of our creatures plus 1 plus 1 and flying if we do so and also grows its power with the more creatures in our party. And then at 2 mana we also have a few creatures that can fill out any role in our party. The Tejuru Paragon can count as a Cleric, Rogue, Warrior and Wizard. Now it won't count as all four at the same time, but it can fill out the remaining party type if necessary. And then can also be kicked to potentially find an extra party type in the top six cards of our library. So that's very useful in the late game. And then we also have two copies of Masked Vandal, which is a changeling, so it has all creature types. So it will also fill out our party nicely and can maybe deal with an artifact or an enchantment if we get rid of a creature in our graveyard. So yeah, the goal of our deck is very simple, just complete our party as soon as possible, play squad commander and attack, and hopefully play some cheap coveted prizes alongside it. And then our mana base has mostly green and white lands, since we're just splashing black for coveted prize. And then we have access to double cave of the frost dragon as an extra creature land to maybe close out the game, some of the channel lands, and then mostly just pathways and some extra dual lands to fix for black. So that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. All right, we're on the draw. We're missing one of our big payoff cards, but we have a reasonable start with Archpriest into maybe Aspirant or Paragon. Facing the Enchantment or Runes deck could be tough. So hopefully they don't find any lifelink runes, which will make it difficult to race. Rune of Might for now. They might just be green-white as opposed to Naya. Take three. And then... 
got a lot of options here. Kind of liking playing the informant discarding something. Not only to try and find a land, but it also sets up our specialist to get back whatever we discard. There's our land, perfect, so that plays specialist next turn. And then specialist either wants to get back like a sentinel or an aspirant. Let's go with uh, aspirant here. And hit for two. Opponent does have the Runeforge champion, unfortunately, so that can get the lifelink if necessary. Yep. Okay, so... Do we still want a specialist, or go Sentinel plus Paragon? Could also go Sentinel plus Aspirant and then try and play Kicked Paragon to try and find our squad commander. Maybe that's the play. Although we would get a full party if we play Paragon. Didn't think that matters in the face of Rune of Sustenance, just kind of have to go over the top here. And who do we want to pump? Maybe the Informants. And get one last attack in. Since I doubt we'll be able to block profitably next turn. And then maybe you want to attack with Archpriest as well. Still have Specialist to get it back if needed. Right, so opponent temporarily drops to 11, but they're about to combo off. And there's a Rune of Sustenance. At least they don't seem to have the Naturalist to play runes for free. Companion draws a card. And we'll take 5. All right, there's Squad Commander, I'll take it. So we'll play that out. And then we want to pump Sentinel and Aspirant so they cannot block profitably with Runeforge Champion. Opponent takes it, falls to zero, so they probably should have blocked, but guess I'll take it. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. This hand has a few too many rogues, and we're missing some of our payoff cards. So I'll take a mulligan. This is a little bit better. Bottom one sentinel, and then... Ideally, pick up another land, but Sentinel can still potentially help us play Attendance. So, we shouldn't have too many issues completing our party, but we don't have any payoff cards yet. Opponent on an Esper deck, probably playing the... New 3-mana Legend. It's gonna be another Aspirant for now. And an attack. Not interested in trading. Well, there's Squad Commander, that's promising. I think we want to get Attendant in play first, just to get an extra creature type, although... Maybe that's not necessary. And then next turn I can play Attendant to complete our party. And we'll still get three tokens here. And then if we draw a white source we won't have to tap Sentinel. So we can attack with it as well. Aspirin triggers. And your opponent might have had the Scheming Seer in hand, but just didn't have the mana to play it. We picked up a black source instead of a white one. Could also go for a Kicked Paragon at that point. And 
and find another Paragon, probably. Full party achieved. So we get to attack. Opponent reading Squad Commander. And they can soak up a little bit of damage. Still take 8. Alright, hopefully we can dodge a Sweeper. And if our opponent's just on a creature plan, we should be able to go over the top. Three cards in hand. Now five mana. And this does kind of look like a Medog Massacre's second main phase after growing Luminarch Aspirant. Which does not bode well for us. Nope, never mind. Opponent passes. Okay, in that case... They might have the 4-mana wizard that can bounce a spell back, which is a reason not to go for Kicked Paragon here. They could also just have a different spot removal spell. So, could just move to combats, could play an Unkicked Paragon, just to make sure we keep our full party. Although, if they then kill Squad Commander, I'll be a little sad that I didn't play Kicked Paragon. I think we should just move to combats and see what happens. Squad Commander triggers. Alright, they have the Infernal Grasp. But we still get our trigger. So we can attack with a team and put the opponent in an awkward spot. So yeah, maybe they should have timed their Infernal Grasp a little differently, but then we could have always responded accordingly. Alright, March as well, exiling Paragon, so they were holding a lot of removal here. They can soak up a little bit of damage, take 6, down to 4. But now we won't have our commander trigger anymore. So do I still play Paragon? And then try and sneak in those last points? Yeah, or we could save it to kick it, but... Feels like that's going to be a little slow. We've got all these white cards in hand, some unable to cast, unfortunately. Drew a few too many single green lands. Opponent goes digging with Indulgence. Discarding a Skyclave Apparition, so their two remaining cards must be pretty good. Alright, they had another Apparition. Exiles Paragon. And put on growing their own apparition now. Specialists doesn't get back anything. Playing my own aspirant to kind of catch up to the opponents seems like a lost cause. So I think going wide with a bunch of tokens is probably our best bet. So I'll play attendant and pass. Wedding announcements, yeah, that's going to go wide for the opponent as well. And a third Aspirant. At least they're empty-handed. And they're not really in a position to start attacking, necessarily. We want to top deck another Squad Commander, if possible. For now, another Attendant and Aspirant. And then we can... Put a counter on a Mage's Attendant, I think. And pass. So let's say our opponent does nothing, makes another token. They've got six blockers. So... I guess they still have a creature land that can maybe block. Otherwise we would have enough for lethal. Ooh, awesome. Squad Commander of the top. If that works out, we should have them. Squad Commander triggers. Aspirant, count from another Mage's Attendant, sure. And attack with the team. Can even sacrifice a wizard in case of a 5 mana instance. Wandering Emperor, I guess we cannot counter here. 
So that will gain some life. Opponent opting to make a token instead of gaining life and exiling a tapped creature is surprising. So we'll see if they have enough to survive. Doesn't look like it. Awesome. I guess if they exiled and gained two, it still would not have been enough. So yeah, close game here against Asper, but Squad Commander steals the show, and with virtually eight copies in the deck, we're pretty likely to find one. Okay, we're on the play, and what do we think of this one? Missing a two-drop and a third land, but it does have potential, Sentinel into Attendance. Although, they are both rogues, so we still only have two party types, so maybe this is a mulligan after all. Okay, this seems much better. Although, sadly, I have to put one on the bottom. So, yeah, I guess Coveted Prize can go, and then land 4 means we get to potentially have a full party on turn 4. Although, it would have been nice to keep a Coveted Prize to maybe double up on Squad Commander. Opponent on a black Sacrifice deck. Okay, the specialist is not bad if they end up killing my Aspirant here. And then we have a little bit of protection thanks to the Mage's Attendance. Make that two. So it wouldn't be attacking here. And then Aspirant probably keeps pumping itself. Skullport Merchant, okay, so that gives him a sacrifice outlet for Shambling Gas to maybe start taking out some of our creatures. But yeah, we have a full party, so we can already play a Squad Commander and Smash if we'd like. And yeah, probably go for it here. And then we'll put a counter on the Wizard. Opponent's just jumping, so we could see a Meat Hook Massacre in our future, which was a reason to maybe keep up the wizard's ability, but that was going to be kind of tricky with all these treasure tokens from Shambling Ghast anyway. So hopefully we can dodge a sweeper. Deadly Disputes, sacrificing Night Witch. Opponent gets a Pest Summoning. That's fine. And it's gonna be a Spider Queen. Okay, that's beatable. Makes a couple spiders. But they don't have an answer for Squad Commander, and we drew Coveted Prize. So we can search up another copy here. Awesome. And this should be quite a lot of damage coming in. And just going face. And then now we can leave our wizard's ability available. And our opponent's dead. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. What do we think of this hand? Yeah, it's got potential. We're missing our big payoff, but we do have an informant which can potentially draw into it as well. Can always discard a land. Specialist could come in handy if our opponent's got some removal. And we can also discard, let's say, Aspirant to the informant and then get it back with Specialist to get full value up against an enchantment deck. Okay, so let's go with Informant plus another Sentinel, and then could discard Aspirant, but let's see what we draw first. 
All right, there we go, coveted prize. So we've got rogue, wizards, cleric, still missing one type, but discarding aspirant seems reasonable here to get the extra counter. And so the specialists does something right away. There are situations where I would rather keep aspirant in hand when it comes to maybe completing our party for two mana as opposed to three, but we'll give this a shot. Opponent's got the Naturalists, so this just a green-white enchantment deck. Ranger class, take four. Another Sentinel, a bit much. We also have a Boseju, which we can use as removal, but probably want to wait on that for a while. So for now, Specialists get back Aspirant. And then we can cover the prize for two mana, getting our squad commander. And we can play it next turn. Okay. So all in all, a reasonable start. Also could have kept back Specialist instead of Informants to kind of bait out a removal spell on our Rogue as opposed to our Wizard, which we probably prefer for party purposes. But we'll see what they decide to do here. Opponent does go with the Wizard, sadly. But they had a second circle anyways. Alright, that's rough. Take Specialist. So now we're pretty far from a full party. And we're down to six. So I don't know if uh, Squad Commander is going to be enough. Now, with that being said, we can use Boseju to free one of our creatures. And then with Sentinel, we can still play Squad Commander. So I think that's the play now. Boseju. And then we want to... Get back our wizard, since we don't have any others. And then informant needs to draw into a land as well, which we did. Play commander. Only one way to tap. But this may not be enough to survive, given the Kami has Trample. So yeah, we still managed to complete our party, but uh, the double Circle of Confinement can be a little bit too much for us. Another Ranger class for one mana. And they can level up Ranger class as well. So that's going to be a 9-powered Kami. So, I can block Naturalist with Commander. If I put Warrior on Wolf and Chump, we still take 6, so that doesn't work. So I have to put 4 Toughness in front of the Trampler. Still take 5, and then Chump the Wolf. Yeah, I guess that's the only available block. If we want to keep squad commander, that is. So we're still alive, and we have a backup commander. And a masked vandal could destroy an enchantment too. So that's interesting. Can get back my specialist, which gets back sentinel. Um, are we in a position to attack? Not really. But we're also not great at blocking a huge trampler. Since we can't use the commander boost. So, yeah, close game. So, tap Sentinels. Leaving as much toughness back as possible. And I think destroy Circle. And then I guess we won't be able to get back our Sentinel if we have to exile it with Vandal. But getting back the lifelinker still seems better. 
And then I'll put a counter on the lifelinker as well. So let's see now. Do we have any shot of attacking here? Seems a little ambitious. But we also want to make sure we can set up lethal next turn if possible. So that's going to go up to 11 power trample. Yeah, we'll have to stay back, I think. And then best possible top deck, probably another commander or coveted prize. Catilda as a huge flying lifelinker. Gonna make it incredibly difficult. Alright, I think we're at the end of the line here. They can pump both wolves, perhaps. Nope, opponent just attacks with a Kami. So that's 11 power trample. If I block with my life linker, I essentially soak up 7 damage. Still taking 4. So if we put Mass Vandal in front, and then 6. 10, and then one token. This is the minimum I need to block with in order to survive. That keeps both commanders, but we lose our life linker in the process, which could be useful in maybe swinging the race back. But if I don't block with my specialist, I would have to block with pretty much everything else, and I would lose the commanders anyway. So. What if I were to top deck another commander? Am I better off keeping specialists? Because we're still not really close to killing the opponent on the way back. So maybe I should try and kill the Kami here. 7, 8, 9. 10, 11, 12. So we can spare a token. 5 plus 6 is 11. Yeah, we'll try this. And we drew an Archpriest, but now we also don't have a full party anymore. So maybe Mass Vandal wasn't allowed to block. But uh, yeah, this is looking like game over. Doesn't matter where I put the counter at this point. Don't have any good attacks. Katilda gets two counters from Ranger class. So we can jump with a sentinel. Another Kami. And a lance. Alright, so gotta jump with a sentinel once more. Doesn't matter what we pump. Probably should have kept land in hand in case we draw another informant to loot with. So maybe the play when blocking was not losing the Vandal and then throwing a couple extra tokens under the bus perhaps. Still don't think it would have made a huge difference at the end of it as Katilda's gonna cross the finish line here. Not sure what they're thinking about. Alright, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a very promising start. Sentinel sets up turn to informants and archpriests, and then we've got rogue, cleric, wizard, warrior coming up, so we've got our full party in hand. Opponent on a blue deck, attendance, grade 2. So play informant, see what we draw into. Coveted prize, wow. Our hand is so stacked, kind of hurts to discard something. But I think attendance makes sense. And then 
next turn we can play commander and then hopefully a one mana cover the price to get a second commander. Another cover the price as well. Opponent could have a jewelry disruption here, which would be kind of painful. It does not happen. Awesome. So full party, turn three. And there's another potentially two commanders coming up. So living the dream here. And our opponent concedes, yeah, even without showing them the extra coveted prizes. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hand has potential. Could use a few extra party types since we have double rogue right now. So any cleric or wizard would be helpful. Put on blue black. It's a more controlling deck. All right, there's our cleric, so we can double spell and uh, can vandal into archpriest. Maybe should have played Archpriest first in case of Jory Disruption. Right, opponent grasps our Sentinel, that's fine. And they've got the Scheming Seer on three. Okay, so do we want to Specialist here? I think so. The alternative is playing Mage's Attendant, which is actually also quite reasonable since that maybe sets up Coveted Prize for one mana next turn and also builds up a wide board. So we've got Rogue, Wizard, and then Vandal as a shapeshifter, either a Cleric or a Warrior. Going on discarding Lunark Aspirin, so their hand must be pretty stacked. And it's going to be a Kaito for now. That's fine. Makes a ninja. And yeah, we get to complete our party here with Archpriests. And then one mana coveted prize. Get Squad Commander. And then I have to decide if I want to keep up the Mage's ability or if I want to play Informant to add more pressure. I think keeping up the ability is going to be more useful in case of a sweeper here. And then probably want to fly the attendants in case they want to chum block already. Yeah, something like a meat hook massacre would be very painful. So that's what we need to avoid. Opponent discards Malevolent Hermit and attacks. So there might be a sweeper incoming here. Discards two lanes. Cannot block. And our opponent concedes, alright, so they must not have found what they were looking for with the connive. And we got there onto the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and our hand, sadly, is a mulligan. This, I guess, we'll have to keep, although it's very unexciting. Bottom of forest. At least we've got all our colors. But, uh... We're running out of turn two masked vandals, not exactly where we want to be. Best case scenario, our opponent kills it, but I don't think that's happening. Gala greeters instead. Okay, squad commander gives us some hope. So now we've got a rogue and then a shapeshifter. So we're missing either a cleric or a wizard to complete our party. Innkeeper triggers Gala Greeters. Opponent can make some treasure. Well, if our opponent's on a Naya Tokens deck, or treasure deck, 
They typically don't run a ton of interaction, so we might be able to go over the top with a squad commander. And there's our missing piece. So, do we want a squad commander right now? Wouldn't let me attack, but then next turn we'll have all those tokens that can get in there as well. So I think that's reasonable. And then, don't really want to trade specialists. Another innkeeper? Okay. Gala greeters triggers. Put on gaining life. And the Magda. So they might also want to make some treasure here to eventually search up something with Magda. Put on going for life and plus one counters instead. Down to two cards in hand, and we even drew a cleric. So we've got a full party with a bit of redundancy. And sure, why not play out Paragon too? And then probably fine to pump the specialists, or we could pump commander in case there's like a three damage effect at some point. Turn our team sideways. And hopefully they fail to draw removal. Bonus down to 12. But they have a nice little setup with double greeters, double innkeeper. So that can make a lot of treasure, gain quite a bit of life. Sentinel will gain 4, plus 2 more is 6. And the Fable of the Mirror Breaker. Okay, opponent is down to one card in hand at least, and they don't seem to have any interaction. But the main concern here is Magda potentially with five treasure, but opponent once again opting not to make any tapped treasure tokens. And we'll play another Ice Prince. And this time, what do we want to pump? Maybe one of the Ice Prince and the Specialists. Alright, Potent jumping with Magda. Pretty happy to see that. As they fall to 5. We're at 29 life, so even if something like Jetmir were to show up, I don't think we're necessarily dead on board. Opponent actually had a Toski, which would have been pretty decent here. But the yeah, opponent was forced to play defense, thanks to an early squad commander, despite our mulligan still managed to assemble a full party. Alright, so we got to see our party deck in action, and yeah, if we don't face any sweeper effects, the deck can be incredibly powerful, as our squad commander is great at breaking any board stalls and kind of going over the top, and we can often get multiple copies in play thanks to a single mana coveted prize, which is also one of the big payoffs in the deck, and uh, overall quite happy with the new additions. Mage's Attendant adding two party types in one card has been incredibly helpful, and in some of the practice games I've been able to counter some key sweepers thanks to that wizard token as well, so cannot be underestimated. So yeah, that'll do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.